old poems from, uh, from it. And the first one is, um, as you hit my time of life, which is just nudging over 40, I was 41 on Sunday. I know I look a lot more, but don't say that. Um, friends talk to you about their divorces, to be or not to be, and things like that. So this, this poem examines that uh, in, a, in a fairly light-hearted way. Tuesday. Her still away in the town, all east winds and tonsillitis as you come back for a quiet night in, not playing with yourself, but instead get the loud catastrophe of a friend whose wife's finally told him, time for Teletubby fuck-off, meowing on your garage roof. Hours then of him determined to see nothing in the coffee cup but the absence now of anyone to help him to the exit in the event of darkness. Later, his blood black with caffeine and whiskey, he swears on the Quran, Bible, and little book of complete bollocks to be more from now on than an instrument in any woman's orchestra. And suddenly all you can see is the promise for him of a long future of cough syrup and scorer straws. As he goes on to share various caravans with guys with mad grey heavy metal hair, and perhaps once a year have an out of underpants experience with a woman twice his age. By midnight you're about to tell him you'd rather wake up with the late Leonid Brezhnev than have to listen to any more of this, but at the last moment keep your sympathetic head, because, as the proverb says, Mock not, for tomorrow you too may have your bare arse turned to the sun. <laughs> That's not really a proverb, surprisingly, but maybe it will become one. Uh, we were in uh, uh, Kilkee uh, on holiday, a uh, last minute August holiday in 2006, and uh, the place we were staying in there was no TV. Uh, it was kind of escape from all those things, but um, it was the time when the that plot, alleged plot to blow up ten planes from Heathrow Airport, was discovered, and uh, there was something very strange about listening to that on the radio. And you never know what's the truth these days. And there was a guy. Uh, I looked. At, you, I kind of thought you could stay here forever making up conspiracy theories in the time we live in. There was a guy, every, every afternoon, very strangely, who went up and down the beach with a metal detector, and I pointed out the window and said, well, whoever they are, he's definitely working for them. <laughs> and then this poem emerged therefrom. The Great Escape. For four days in August to this place of novelty haircuts and surrealist sandcastles, in weather that once spelt socialist summer camp, you watch a lone goose move high across the water. Imagine the wetsuits plopping one by one from a distant rock, or a cult come here to commit mass suicide. Kilki, host town to Uzbekistan, a B&B &B run by a guy you're sure is ex-Romanian army, the Gold Sea Chinese takeaway. Fry ups all day, Uncle Three. You could do this, whittle yourself a pipe from a piece of driftwood, Spend the wide autumn evenings smoking it. Let the terrorists in the television take over the airports. Just whisper away about how the man with the metal detector who prowls the beach each afternoon is definitely working for them. <laughs> um, kind of on, on maybe a sort of a similar thing. The book, there's five sections in the book. I think the first section, there's a lot of paranoia and foreboding. And I always feel, just when things settle down, I think this isn't right, something is going to happen now. And this uh, poem called for foreboding looks at that feeling. Foreboding, once more the endless Monday to Sunday and background again, the day's content mostly just to be a small dog peeing against the same old tree. So why then do you get the feeling that the future is about to leap at you like a baboon with a hatchet? from a manhole or a closet, screaming something which can only mean this is the end of the old regime. Next one is called Last Man Standing, and it's a poem, it's kind of that growing up or selling out sort of a theme, maybe running through it. 
and also maybe the way about the way we deny our past. Last man standing. In your memory, I talk about how great it was, though it didn't happen, and I wasn't there. The girls we knew were the sort. One minute you're being introduced to them, the next you're standing on a gallows in Baghdad, wondering how you got there. The mornings we woke up laughing. That year we had nothing to lose, though it didn't happen, and I wasn't there. Before I discovered there is a God, and he's a balding former congressman from Wyoming. Told you rebellion is a place the good pass through, while the ghastly stay forever. And you replied that with my guaranteed Irish smirk, and the constant Hitler-Stalin pacting I had going on, I was in danger of becoming everyone's compromise candidate though it didn't happen, and I wasn't there. In your memory, I talk about how great it was, then turn to face the aggressively average day.